Hey guys, VBad here with another VPlays, and we're going back into it with the best of series now. Bear in mind that this best of series is definitely caged around ease of use. Easiest aircraft to fly at this tier based on the aircraft class. Now we've already covered the altitude fighters, the turn fighters, the heavies, ground attackers, and bombers. But now we're talking about multi rules, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because in my opinion, multi rules are probably one of the hardest aircraft types to be able to master because they are very weak in almost every category. They're a jack of all trades and a master of none, so almost every aircraft has a way to essentially counter you. So you have to be much sneakier, you have to be much more aware of the battle space around you, and therefore if you're at this point where you're getting a tier 10 multi roll most likely you figured out a lot of those tricks so do you need the easiest multi roll to fly because at this point it might be more which one is really the best for doing the true role of a multi roll which is contributing to ground capture by destroying ground targets as well as being able to take out air targets so i kind of went a different route with this and you'll see where my head was at but First, let's just talk about what we have here, because each nation has its own multi roles. In fact, the U.S. actually has two of them. So starting out with the F-7U Cutlass, you're going to be getting a very fast platform carrying four 20mm cannons, which are going to be the same guns you see on the XF-90, as well as the F-2H, and four 500-pound bombs, which means... You're going to get very easy to use munitions. Bombs are a lot easier to use. Still gets that typical 120 second reload time. So it's pretty decent for what it's meant to do. It is meant to go out there, blitz aircraft at low altitude, kind of operate as a low altitude heavy and crush folks. Now that's a little bit of a contrast to the F-84F. The F-84F is almost all rockets. It's kind of built for, for being a rocket bird to begin with, with two tiny Tims and 12 five inch rockets. But its armament's going to be machine guns. It does get six of them, and they're going to be the identical weaponry that you would find on an F-86 Sabre at Tier 10. And the maneuverability is actually really good. With the setup I have here, we're at about 10 seconds, and I don't have any maneuverability skills mounted on the pilot. But she still has the ability to get around and do some pretty decent dogfighting, because most aircraft at this tier have sacrificed much of their maneuverability for speed in the form of that jet propulsion. The I-215 is just a meme plane. It's one of those things where it just snipes things and deletes them with a single shot. Hardest plane to play at this tier would be your, your bat wing here at BVP215.01, or 02 rather. It has a tail gunner. It has air-to-ground rockets. It has air-to-air -air rockets. It has four 20-millimeter cannons. This is an aircraft that's so jack-of-all-trades, it doesn't even know what it's supposed to be. It doesn't know if it's a dogfighter. It doesn't know if it's a ground pounder but it has a little bit of everything. I, I really do like this plane. I think it's a lot of fun to fly, but it's tricky to learn and specialize since none of the aircraft before it really fly like it. I'm skipping the J7W3 and I'm gonna go to the Hunter. If I were to pick the best aircraft for being a multi-role, I really feel like it's the Hunter. The Hunter has air-to-ground rockets that can double as air-to-air -air rockets, so it gets that little bit of versatility, but the air-to-ground performance is really good with these very unique cluster-launched rockets. And you get two 500-pound bombs, which do great work. On top of that, you get heavy fighter armament with these four 30-millimeter cannons. These are going to be the same guns you see on the Javelin, except they're all nose-mounted, so you're going to be able to pump out some serious damage, and you're very quick. It's a lot like the F-7U in that respect, that it's fast, but it doesn't have tons of maneuverability. But my pick for easiest multi-roll to fly at tier 10 is going to be the J-7W3, or the Jawa, as my clan likes to call these things. Why do I pick this aircraft? Well, ease of use, right? Envision you're the guy going down the zero line, and you finally get to tier 8. And instead of continuing with some of the most maneuverable aircraft in the game and some of the kings in their, in their arena, you're hopping into a multi-roll with the J7W1 with a pusher prop design with this kind of rear lifting body. And it loses a lot of the maneuverability and it goes and gets four 30 millimeter cannons in the nose. Sure, you can delete things really easily, but it's probably a little bit harder to get used to flying it. But as far as multi-rolls go, they're actually pretty maneuverable. And with the setup I have here, which granted is leaning more towards a maneuverability build on the pilot, we got aerobatics as well as 
uh, aerodynamic expert on here and then lightweight wing frame were sub 10 second turn time. And again, at this tier, when you finally make it up to tier nine and tier 10, most of those turn fighters are gone. You're not going to be running into spit 14s in this aircraft. So lo most of the aircraft have given up that capability and, and gotten a lot more speed out of it and a lot more altitude performance. So this aircraft gets a lot more oomph out of the engines. It can push itself to areas that you probably couldn't have done with the J7W1, but it's also going to be able to turn really well. And since it is a pusher design, it actually feels a lot more like you can do good burst turns. So when you slam the boost after hitting the air brakes, you feel like you're kicking the nose around faster. And the 30 millimeter cannons just get better with each tier. And here they are devastating. I have learned to fear these aircraft for that very reason. Sure, it only carries two bombs and, you know, it's got a 120 second reload, but that's not nearly the same type of armament we see with the other multi rolls, except for the 215 and the I 215, rather. But it's going to be the easiest one to use. In my opinion, out of all of these, if I were to have somebody sit down and fly a tier 10 multi roll for the first time, I'd put them in this plane because it will be the easiest to wrap their head around. Sure, it's not going to be as good as the other ones at those particular roles that you'd expect with a multi-roll, but I stand by my decision here. And the thing just has a plethora of modifications right off the bat. We automatically have got four slots opened up on this thing for consumables and then equipment. I have gone with the gas or sorry, the reinforced bull carrier in order to give me longer bursts because these 30 millimeter cannons tend to overheat very quickly and this just gives you a little bit more time on target and if you can kill it in the first pass then it really doesn't matter about turning anymore anyways so without any further ado we're gonna hop into a battle with this bad boy and see how the jawa does all right so here we are in battle we're up against a specialized xf90 oh, but there's an airfield so that's a good sign for us so when it comes to dog fighting that's kind of what we want to do with this thing so let's see how we can do. I'm immediately going to go and try and grab a garrison and then I'm going to work my way towards the airfield. If we capture the airfield first and then the enemy gets the command center, most likely the bombers are going towards the airfield and that's going to be vital for us to maintain. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to try and soften up that location by sending a bunch of my bots that way. All right, let's see here. Watching the mini-map, looking at the direction that these aircraft are going in. Now, you got to pull massive lead with this thing because those 30s still are lotting through the air. That's one down. We do see this guy head on. Oh, not quite dead, but he is on fire. Rudder down. Got him. And now I am going to... Oh, wait. He's right here. I'm going to vacate. Hopefully someone will be able to finish that off. Let's... Potato, potato. And get into these fights here. What is this thing? Fox Wolf 252. He is dropping down. Hunter's a good target. His engine's out. down who else do we got man it is a bit of a tussle here okay he's got air to air rockets oh no got our tail we still get the guns up come on get him got him Get our tail back up yeah, we're still really low on hit points and his tail gunner's on us. No, 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 no. Oh, that 252 got us. Shucks. But we're already up to uh, 3,000 personal points and it looks like our team's doing all right. Come on, guys. Get in there. I see that light is on our multi-roll. That's what I'm concerned about right now. Come on, save him. Somebody's vectored in. It's another multi-roll. We'll see. Oh, we just got the airfield. Can I not spawn at the airfield? Come on. E. There we go. Gotta remember my boutons. 
There we go. Somebody go after him. Looks like our heavies are dueling. Come on, is this a revenge situation? There we go. Revenge achieved. There is my little brother. Oh, I know we got a hit, but we weren't the ones to get the kill. Oh no. Got him. Still a lot of aircraft here. Here's another J7W3. Oh, he's on me. Okay. Maneuverability up. He lost his pilot, so that's good for me. Got him. Multi roll down low. It's the hunter again. Come on. Do a predictable flight for me here. Yeah, I didn't even get it. Looks like my team's doing work over the uh, man center, though. That's nice to see. Let's see if we can get over there and help out a little bit. I know that the heavy's inbound. A heavy's inbound, at least. If we can kill some of these defense aircraft, maybe we can sneak in here and grab this site. Ah, this guy's too slow for me. Got it. Nice. Two, five, two. Yeah, he's luring me up to high altitude. Just got to avoid that. Don't fall into those traps. That's the way that I would try and get me. Hunter's back again. This thing prefers ground attackers. Ground attackers are great targets for an aircraft like this. Oh, gotta love those nearly head-on attack runs. The enemy did pick up the zone, though. Doesn't mean I'm gonna stop killing aircraft here. Calling in some allies to the zone. Cool off. Cool off. There we go. Okay. Getting the big old fat aircraft on us now. The 28 or T183 and then the 252. Not my favorite aircraft to see. The heavy. Oh, is that the 183? Oh, we just lost our engine. Come on. Lost our ability to do a kick turn here. I am falling for my own trap here. I always tell people not to do that. We don't have firefighter. Oh, shucks. Well, the bomber flight's inbound. We're at 500 points. We're making good headway here. Seems like we're leading on personal points. We're already at 10k. Let's see if we can get back in there. Six seconds till we're back. My team is finally centering on the zone. We're getting a good cluster of friendlies. Okay. We really need to pick up the airfield. It's going to be critical because they're going to be picking up the command center. And they're going to be picking up... Oh, no, 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 no. Not already. Come on. Come on. Not today. No, is the other ones here now. Not one, it's the other, right? They're stopping me from getting to the zones. He's going to burn out.
Got the zone. Alright. Be vengeance for the rocket attack at the beginning of the game. That was in the zone, nice. Okay. Let's focus on the planes. And game over. Managed to get... 12,900? Eh, not too bad, not too bad. Decent enough battle. We'll throw up the GG even though he left in a hurry. And we'll head back to the hangar. So, like I was saying, easiest aircraft to fly, and this logic is entirely based off of the idea that you would have gone down the Japanese line, going down through the zeros, and then you would have encountered this aircraft at around tier 8, you get into the J7s. But the J7W3, as far as a tier 10 goes, it would probably be the easiest for you to jump into if you weren't already a seasoned and skilled player that's used to flying multi rolls. And that's just kind of my argument. Now, if you were to just ask me, hey V, which is the best multi roll at tier 10? I want to say it's the Hunter. I love my BVP 21502. I love that thing. It's a lot of fun to fly. But the Hunter. Just because of the air to ground capacity and the strong forward firing guns, I think that that's going to be your best bet. Uh, end game results. Somebody asked me to go over these. We managed to capture four zones and twice we were able to pick up the airfield. We we're also able to assist in grabbing the command center as well as that garrison right at the beginning. And we amassed 575 capture points, 160 while defending, 415 while we were attacking. Now, Somebody else asked me a little bit ago, they said, Hey V, I've been getting good scores. I've been getting lots of kills, really good personal points. I'm number one on my team, but I'm not winning battles. It comes down to, if that's the case, look at these two categories. Capture points received, sectors captured. And don't look at capture point received while defending. Look at while attacking. The ABCs of this game, I say it all the time, is always be capping. I might not be the best of the best out there, but I think those principles are always the good ones to go to. I've, if you are a good pilot and you can do that, you can make that work for you, you should be seeing more victory. Okay, it'll just kind of hit that ratio because that's really the goal of this game. If you came to us from World of Tanks or World of Warships, there's an attrition mode built into the game. You sink a ship, you kill a tank, it's gone from the battle for the rest of the game. And this... You get to respawn all the way up through squall lines. So the kills matter a lot less. And the points for capture matter that much more. Killing that aircraft is only really worthwhile if they're within that ring of the capture site. So just bear that in mind. Anyways, this was the J7W3. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.